Hello everybody and welcome back to another tutorial video. Now today I'm going to be showing you how you can save and back up your Nintendo Wii games onto a USB hard drive using a program called USB Loader GX. Now to make this work we are going to need a couple of things. Obviously we're going to need all of your Nintendo Wii games that you want to back up onto a USB hard drive. You're obviously going to need that USB hard drive right here. And you're also going to need a Nintendo Wii that is homebrewed. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about or you haven't yet homebrewed your Nintendo Wii, there will be a link at the top right of your screen as well as down below in the video description to take you to a full tutorial on how to homebrew your uh, Nintendo Wii that I made a couple of months ago. You're also going to need a uh, SD card right here. This one is 2 gigabytes. However, the Wii does support up to 32 gigabytes, but we're not going to need to put a whole lot of things on this card. So a 2 gig card should work perfectly fine. You're also going to need a Nintendo Wii remote, obviously. And that is pretty much it, besides you know all the standard things you would have with your Nintendo Wii. So I'm just going to cut right to the chase. I'm going to go, I'm going to switch over to my computer and I can show you the things that we're going to need to get this operation up and running. All right, so we are here on my computer and you're going to need to download a couple of things to put onto your SD card. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is put your SD card into your computer, which I'm going to do right now. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the drive is formatted. So you can see here that I have uh, you know, a couple of things on this uh, SD card. This was actually the same SD card that I used in my homebrew video. So I do still have all of the homebrew files. So you're just gonna to wanna to totally wipe the card. Now if you have like any like save game data or you know anything like that, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you copy that over, or over to your computer so that you have a full backup of it. Uh, so that you know when you're done with this card, you can put all that stuff back on it. Then what you're going to want to do is go to the, uh, this link right here that I'm going to have down below in the video description. This is going to be for the custom iOS installer. And you're going to need this before we install USB Loader GX, which you can see I have up here. I'll also have this link down below. So you're just going to want to download both of these packages. So you just want to go down here to where it says guide. And depending on if you have a Nintendo Wii or a Wii U, you see we've got two different download links right here. So we're going to be using this with a standard Nintendo Wii. So we're going to just download this file right here. Now, there's also a full guide on this page right here, which is pretty nice. Um, so you know you can just like follow all these steps right here, but I'm gonna be going through all this in this video tutorial here. You're also gonna to wanna to go over to the uh, USB Loader GX SourceForge page and download this right here, and that's going to download for you. Now, the CIOS installer will come in a zip file and the USB Loader GX will come in a seven zip file. So you're going to need uh, a you know program such as so 7-Zip or WinRAR. I'm going to be using WinRAR here. And you're going to want to open uh, both of these files. And all you got to do is I'm going to get my folder here with the blank SD card. If you're using uh, WinRAR, you just want to drag. So this is the CIOS installer. You want to drag this apps folder into your SD card. And then we can close out of this once it finishes copying. So once it finishes copying, you're going to want to go into this apps folder and you see we have the D2X CIOS installer. So now what you want to do is go back over to your USB Loader GX 7-zip archive and open the apps folder and then drag the USB Loader GX into the apps folder that you've already made on, on your SD card. Now you could do this whole thing separately, but just to make it a little bit easier, we're going to copy both of these files um, or you know both these packages into our, our uh, or over to our SD card. So uh, just to reiterate here, you want to make sure that you have an apps folder on your SD card, and inside of that apps folder, you want to put both of the unzipped packages. If you just drag the full zip file over to here, it's not going to work properly. You want to make sure that you extract it here first. So that's pretty much all we have to do on the computer side of things. Now I'm going to switch over to our homebrewed Nintendo Wii and I'm gonna be showing you what you need to do from there. All right, so here we are on our Nintendo Wii that does have the Homebrew Channel installed. Now, as I said, if you don't already have this installed or if you don't know what the Homebrew Channel is, you're gonna to wanna to go and check out my other video where I show you how to install the Homebrew Channel on your Nintendo Wii as this is going to be necessary for all of this other stuff we're gonna be doing in this video to work properly. So the first thing that you wanna do is take your SD card that you've copied those files over to and insert it into your Nintendo Wii SD card slot and once you've done that you just want to launch the homebrew channel now once the homebrew channel is loaded up here you see that we have both the USB loader GX as well as the D2X CIOS installer 
Now we don't want to load USB Loader GX just yet. We want to actually go and load the CIOS installer. You're going to need to do this first before we, uh, you know, like actually set up USB Loader GX. We're just going to click on this here and click on load. And once it loads up here, it's going to, this is probably going to be the most confusing part of this whole setup, but I promise you, if you just follow along with what I do, it's going to be pretty easy. So the first thing that you want to do is just press on any button to continue as it says down there. So you can see uh, if we use the up and down D-pad, if you notice to the left of your screen, there is that uh, little arrow thing moving down. We want to make sure it's on the first option and we want to change that. So use the right button on your D-pad to change it to V10 Beta 53 D2X V10 Beta 53 Alt. So we're gonna have to do this whole thing two times. So the first thing you wanna make sure uh, that it's at this whole Beta 53 thing. Then you wanna press the down button on your D-pad to change the CIOS base version. We're gonna to wanna to change this to 56. So just go up until you see 56 here. Then we're gonna to wanna to press the down button again and change the CIOS slot. We're gonna to wanna to change this to 249. You can see it's, it's already on 249, so we're good there. And then we wanna go down to CIOS revision and change this to 65535, as you can see right there. Now we're all good here, so we're just gonna to wanna to press the A button to continue, and then press A once again. You can see it has slot 200 selected. You're just gonna to wanna to press A to install it. And now it's going to begin downloading the iOS 56 uh, like the actual metadata over the network. That's one thing that I did forget to mention. You are going to need to make sure your Wii is, you know, on your home network to make sure that it's able to download all this stuff. If you, if you don't have it already connected, you're going to want to exit out of this and go into your Wii system menu, um, you know, and, and like actually configure it up to, you know, basically connect it to your home network. So this process shouldn't take that long and it should you know, bring us back to the CIOS installer once it does all of this. All right, so you can see that we have successfully installed, as you can see right there, we have uh, that little green slot under 249. So what we're gonna wanna do now is press the B button, and it's gonna bring us back to the home routine. We're gonna wanna go into the CIOS installer again, and once we're back in, you're gonna wanna press any button to continue so we get to this screen right here. And now you're gonna to want to install a whole different custom iOS version. So we're gonna to wanna to change this to the beta 52 this time, not the beta 53 alt. So you wanna have it on this one. Then you wanna go and press the down D-pad again and change the CIOS base to 57. Then you wanna go down once more and change the CIOS slot to 250. And then you wanna change, you know, go down once again, change the CIOS revision to 65535 again, and just press the A button to continue. And then we're going to press the A button again. As you can see, it has slot 250 is flashing there. That's the one it's going to install. So we're gonna press that. Again, you wanna make sure that your Wii is connected to your home network. All right, and once it finishes all that, you can see that slot 250 right there has a green mark on it. That's good, that says that, uh, that it installed successfully. So now we're just going to press the B button once again to exit back to the homebrew channel. All right, so now we are all set up and ready to launch USB Loader GX. But before we do that, you want to make sure that you have your USB hard drive formatted in either the NTFS file system or the EXT file system. Now on Windows, you'll only be able to format it in the NTFS file system using the uh, you know, default Windows format tool. And it's very simple. All you have to do is plug that USB drive into your computer, open up this PC, and right click on your USB drive, click on format, and make sure it's at NTFS. You can add a volume label if you want to, but it really doesn't matter. If you're on Mac, you're gonna to wanna to go into the disk management tool, uh, or sorry, the disk utility tool, and you know format it there and you, you can probably format it to ext i don't believe you can do ntfs from there if you can then that's great but ext will work perfectly fine so once you've got it formatted i'm just going to unplug it from my computer here you're going to want to plug it into your nintendo wii now i have read on a couple of form sites that the usb hard drive will only work in one of the two usb ports on your nintendo wii now, you know, you can check this through a very simple trial and, and error method as, you know, when you launch USB or GX, as we will, you know, pretty shortly here. If it's not able to find the hard drive, there's a 20 second timeout that it will do. And then, you know, like during that, 
20 seconds you want to just swap uh, what USB port your drive is plugged into if you can do it that fast um, then you can just like actually quit the USB Lure GX program exit back to the homebrew channel and then uh, change what USB port your drive is plugged into so I'm just going to launch it right here and if I have plugged it into the right USB port it should launch uh, and actually recognize the hard drive so you can see right here it's so you can see right there it's initializing the USB device so I did actually plug it into the right USB port if you plug into the other one that will you know, like start the whole timeout sequence and will give you 20 seconds um, but you can see here that it is uh, you know, going through that process of initializing the USB device. All right, so here we are in the USB loader GX menu. I did actually have to change the hard drive that I was using as the one that I was using that I showed in the beginning of the video was actually making the whole channel just not work. Like it would actually freeze up. I'd have to physically hard reset the Wii. And I think that has something to do with the fact that that hard drive was actually an older laptop hard drive and I was using a 2.5 inch uh, HDD to USB enclosure that just something you know wasn't working with that that's worked on like other PCs but it doesn't like working with USB or GX so if you're having problems um, with the hard drive you have it might just you know not work with USB or GX I think this one is probably the fact that it's way too old um, so I had to actually plug in I'm using a 16 gigabyte flash drive right now and you know as you can see I'm you know like actually on the menu and it's found that the USB drive is in there so I'm gonna be showing you how you can actually save a Wii game disk onto your uh, USB device again whether that's a USB flash drive or if it's a USB hard drive so what you're going to want to do is when you're in the USB Lord GX menu as you can see right here just going to want to uh, put your Wii game disc into the Wii's game slot so I'm going to be using Super Mario Galaxy 2 uh, and you can see now once you insert the game disc into the drive it automatically pops up with this little menu and what, what we want to do is click on install and it's going to ask you if you want to install a game we're going to click on yes and now it's going to read uh, the game disc from the drive and it's going to pop up and show you what game that it is. So this should pop up with, as you can see right here, Super Mario Galaxy. It's 1.29 gigabytes. So we're just going to click on OK. And it's going to copy all the game data from the DVD onto the USB drive. You can see at the bottom right there, it's going to take just above three minutes uh, for it to copy all this from here. I think when I started, it, it was like at about 10 minutes and it's you know gone down pretty fast. This timer obviously depends on how big that the game disc is. So this one was only about two gigabytes in size, so it's not going to take that long. But if you have one that is, you know, a little bit larger than that, um, I've seen people where it takes up to like, you know, upwards of 30 minutes for it to copy all the data over. So it could take, um, you know, a long amount of time, but this one seems to be going by pretty fast. So I'm just going to let it finish all this stuff up here and I will come back uh, once the uh, game just has been copied over to the drive. All right, so you can see we're just about finished up here. It's almost at 100% and there you go. So it you know says right here it has successfully installed a Super Mario Galaxy and it you know obviously plays that you know pretty nice little sound that it did and when we click on OK uh, we should be able to see that in here somewhere I think if we actually switch it to um, yeah so we're gonna select title sources Wii games uh, and there we go right there we've got Super Mario Galaxy. And we're gonna actually switch it over. There's a whole nother view that I actually prefer when we're using this. I think it's not that one. How do you change the views? I've told, oh, this right here. Yeah, so when we do that, uh, this is where it's going to pop up, you know, with these, like, like it'll actually show the Wii's game coverer. Now, right now, it does have, like, all of the other Wii channels in here, but if you don't want that, you can just go up to that settings menu again and uncheck the NAND channels right there. And when we do that, it'll only show Super Mario Galaxy. Now, if you want to get the game's cover art, because as you can see right now, it doesn't show anything, you can just go back to this title view, uh, which is this one, or which one is it? This one? Yeah, so you can see that we're back here. If you click on this image right here, uh, it will bring up this thing that says cover download. And you want to make sure all these are checked and just click on OK. And we'll begin to download the game's cover. So you can see it found four missing files. We're going to click Yes. It's going to actually go and download that stuff from the network. Again, you want to make sure that your Wii's um, that your Wii is on, uh, you know, success successfully connected to your home network for this to work. But you can see that it is downloading um, these files from GameTDB.com. And when we do that, and you can see right there that we now have Super Mario Galaxy 2 with its nice cover art there. So if we go back to the view right here. 
you can see we've got Super Mario Galaxy. Now, if I take the game out of the, uh, like, the actual Wii's disk drive, I'm going to do that right now. So, you can hear that the disk is coming out. And if I go in here, Super Mario it is going to pop up with, you know, like you're actually going to launch it from the uh, Wii's disk channel. And you can click on Start. And now it's going to load this game off of the USB flash drive. And you know it's going to work as you would uh, as you would expect it to, and it might actually go. You know, if you're using like a very fast hard drive, it, this could actually speed up uh, the game's loading times, as it's not having to uh, boot off of the CD drive anymore. So this isn't going to work because I don't have uh, the Wii nunchuck. So I'm just going to go back to the Wii menu here, but you can see that that the game works perfectly fine, which is super cool. And you can obviously, you know, kind of like the whole point of this is to save multiple games to that USB drive so that you don't have to carry around all of your Wii games with you uh, whenever that you want to play your, uh, you know, Nintendo Wii console. So that is pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. If you guys found this, you know, like helpful at all, be sure to give this video a like and also be sure to, you know, let me know down in, in the comments below what you think of uh, the Homebrew channel and USB Loader GX. And... You know, as always, guys, I just want to thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.